Welcome to Electro Online, and here's an example of how to find the slope, the concavity, the maximum, the minimum, and the inflection points on a function. And the function is f of x equals 5 plus 12x minus x cubed. So it's a cubic equation, not a quadratic equation. So that means that we probably will find the multiple of these points. So let's go ahead and follow our technique. The first thing you always want to do is find the derivative of your function. And why do we want to find the derivative? Well, the derivative is the slope of the function which will allow us to set the derivative equal to zero to find the max, mins, and horizontal inflection points. So, number one, we're going to find the derivative of the function f prime of x is equal to, that would be 12 minus 3x squared. So now we're going to set the derivative equal to zero. So the second thing we do is we set f prime of x equal to 0, so 0 equals 12 minus 3x squared, uh, which means if we're going to solve this and set and solve for x, okay, so we just don't set it equal to 0, we also solve it for x once we set it equal to 0, so this becomes 3x squared equals 12, divide both sides by 3, we get x squared equals 4, so therefore we have x is equal to plus or minus 2. That means there are two places where the slope is 0 at x equals 2 and at x equals negative 2. Of course, we don't know yet where the corresponding y values are, so for that we need to do step 3, find the corresponding y values. Find f of x equals 2 and f of x equals negative 2, which means we're finding the y values of the particular points where the slope is 0. So let's do that, so f when x equals 2 is equal to 5 plus 12 times 2 minus 2 cubed. That's 24 plus 5, that's 29, minus 8, that would be 21. And f, when x equals negative 2, is equal to 5 plus 12 times negative 2 minus negative 2, oops, I've got the negative there, uh, negative 2 quantity cubed. So this is a negative 24, that would be negative 8 times a negative 8, that's plus 16, plus 5, that would be plus 11. All right, so when x is 2, y is 21. When x is negative 2, y is 11. So let's go ahead and put those points on the graph. So when x is equal to 2, 1, 2, uh, y is equal to 21, so up here somewhere. So we know that at this location, this is 21, this is 2, we have a horizontal point. We don't know yet if it's a max, a min, or an inflection point. Then when x is negative 2, y is 11. So 1, 2, negative 2, it's 11, that's about there, 11. So over here, we have another point where the slope is 0. So either these are max, mins, or horizontal inflection points, but we don't know for sure yet what they are. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to find the second derivative. So for Step four, find f double prime of x. So f prime of x right here is 12 minus 3x squared. So when we take the derivative of this, we get minus 6x. Okay, now we're going to set the second derivative equal to zero. So step five, set f, oop, I forgot the t, f double prime of x equal to zero. Why do we do that? Well, where the second derivative is equal to zero, we have an inflection point, okay? So, f double prime, oops, what's f double prime? f double prime was minus six, so minus six x equals zero, that means x equals zero. So, when x is equal to zero, I have an inflection point. Now, since I didn't find a max or a min, or with other words, I didn't find a place on the curve where the slope is zero, for x equals zero, then that is an inflection point where we're not horizontal, so that means there is a vertical inflection point there. It's not a horizontal inflection point, which means since I didn't find x equals plus two or x equals minus two over there when I set the second derivative equal to zero, this guarantees that these two points are either max or a min. So from this result, I can see that these two points are a max or a min. And of course, the one that is higher up would be considered a max, the one that's lower would be considered a min. So that's a max, that's a min. So now I have to find the inflection point, which is somewhere at x equals zero. 
So let's now find the corresponding y value for the point where we know we have an inflection point. So for 6, we find f of x equals 0. So we do that, we get f of x equals 0 is equal to 5 plus 12 times 0 minus 0 cubed, which is 5. Ah, I see something that I did wrong. This was supposed to be negative 11. Haha. <laughs> see, the reason why I thought something was up is because I found the y value to be lower than my minimum, which is not really possible. So that means that I made a mistake here, I went back, and sure enough, this is minus 24. This is plus 8, which gives me minus 16, plus 5 gives me minus 11. So actually, my minimum point is, is not at y equals plus 11, my minimum point is at y equals minus 11. So minus 11 is down here somewhere, and so at minus 2. So I have a minimum there, I have a maximum there. And my inflection point is on the y-axis, where y is equal to 5, where x is equal to 0. So 5 is about here, and so here I have what we would call a vertical or near vertical inflection point. So we have a minimum here, we have a maximum there, we have an inflection point. So I can imagine, when I think about it, that the curve is probably going to look like this. Pretty good guess at this point, but let's get some additional confirmation. Since we now know that we have an inflection point at x equals 0, what will be the concavity to the left and the concavity to the right of that inflection point? So for number 7, find concavity. So we're going to, to do that, we're going to test to the left and to the right, test to left and right. Of the inflection point. So we go back, find the second derivative, which is right here, f double prime of x. So we have f double prime of x is equal to minus 6x. We found an inflection point at x equals 0, so I want to check to the left of x equals 0 and to the right of x equals 0. So to the left, I'm going to take x equals negative 1. To the right, I'm going to take x equals positive 1. And let's see what we end up with the sign of the second derivative. So f double prime of x equals 1 is equal to minus 6 times 1, which is minus 6, which is negative. So in a region where the second derivative is negative, we have a situation where it's concave down. So that means any part of the curve where I'm to the right of x equals 0, the slope is concave down, or the concavity is concave down, so that makes sense that this is concave down right there to the right of x equals 0, which means that we're dealing with a maximum there. So we've confirmed it. So that means that this is a maximum point that we're dealing with. Actually, I shouldn't write it there. I should go back over here, and I can say that when x is equal to 2, we're dealing with a max. When x is equal to negative 2, we probably are dealing with a min. So this is confirmed. We're still trying to figure out what's going on over here. So we're now going to plug in a point to the left. So f double prime when x equals negative 1 is equal to negative 6 times negative 1, which is 6, which is positive. So, if the second derivative is positive, in that region, the concavity is concave up. Concave up means that it's like bowl-shaped. That means that there we're going to find a minimum, which means that the point that's in that region must be a minimum. So that's also confirmed. And over here you can see that it's concave up. It's a bowl shape like this. And so that means we have confirmed that the slope looks like this over here. Now we can do one more thing. Notice that the inflection point, the max and the min, all divide the regions, the the uh, xy plane into various regions. So if we draw a line straight through the minimum point like here, and we draw a line straight through the maximum point like this, we now have three regions, region 1, region 2, and region 3, which are delineated by the max and mins. And typically the, the, the slope between the max and the min doesn't change. It's either always positive or it's always negative. 
If it, if it changes, then there must be a max or min there to make a change. So now we can find out what the slope is like in region 1, region 2, and region 3 by plugging in values of those regions, x values of those regions, back into the first derivative. So we're going to evaluate the first derivative in terms of region 1, 2, and 3. So that's part 8. We're going to take the first derivative, f prime of x, which is equal to 12 minus 3x squared, and we're going to evaluate a point in each of the three regions. So let's say x equals negative 3, let's say x equals 0, and let's say that x equals 3. So let's plug in those three values for x, which is a representative point in each of the three regions, to see what the slope is in each case. So f, when f prime of x equals negative 3, is equal to 12 minus 3 times negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared is a positive 9 times 3 is a minus 27, plus 12 is a minus 15, which is negative, which means that the slope is negative. And sure enough, in this region, it looks like the slope is negative. When we evaluate f prime of x equals 0, that's equal to 12 minus 3 times 0 squared, which is 12, which is positive. Which means that in this region, region 2, the slope is positive, and sure enough, we have verified that as well. And then finally, we try f prime when x equals 3. This is in region 3. This is 12 minus 3 times 3 squared, which is also negative 15, which is negative again. And you can see that in the region to the right of this maximum, the slope is negative, which again, we verified. There it is. And we have now a good picture of our graph of this particular function. So you can see, let's recap real quick how we go about solving all the max, mins, inflection points, concavity, and the slope. We start out by finding the derivative. We set the derivative equal to 0. We find particular values for x. At those values for x, the slope is 0. It could be a max, a min, or a horizontal inflection point. We then find the second derivative. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, before that, we find the corresponding y values first to know where the points are on the graph. Then we find the second derivative. We set the second derivative equal to 0 to find inflection points. If the value for x that we find is different from the value for x that we found over here, we know that we have an inflection point that's not horizontal, therefore it must be a vertical inflection point. <clears throat> then you find the corresponding y value for that inflection point. Then you place that on your graph as well, so now you found your max, mins, and your inflection points. Then you check for concavity. You check to the right and to the left of your inflection point to see if it's concave up or concave down. If you plug in a value for x that's to the left, uh, let's see that, like for example a negative 1, we get a positive value, that means to the left it's concave up. And when we plug a value into the right of the inflection point, we end up with a negative value, so therefore we know that it's concave down. And then finally, we then plug in representative values between the locations where the slope is 0 to find the slope of the graph. And then again, when we plug into the first derivative, we plug in a certain value for x. We find that the first derivative is either negative or positive. We either have a negative slope or a positive slope accordingly. And that's how you find all the critical points on a graph using this technique.